The most important part of gill making, the retainers. In this guide, we will talk about everything relevant to retainers, from how to unlock them, what they can do for you, as well as more specifically, ventures and taxes. First, to unlock retainers, you must complete the main quest, The Scions of the Seventh Dawn. Or, in other words, you must visit The Waking Sands for the first time. After that, you can at any point talk with a retainer Vocket in any of the main cities to hire a retainer, which is completely free, I should add. Take note that trial accounts cannot hire retainers and that to have more than two retainers, you must expand your subscription, increasing the monthly cost of playing. Additionally, in your city of origin, you will find the quest An Ill-Conceived Venture, which unlocks the possibility of choosing a class for your retainers, as well as the ability to send them on so-called ventures. We will get back to this a bit later. Now, to hire a retainer, you simply walk up to the retainer bucket in a major city and hire them. This allows you to customize their appearance and personality if you wish, and you can even give them a name. I would recommend choosing a name that does not immediately betray that it is your retainer for privacy reasons. Take note that you will need a Retainer Fantasia to change this later. These are found through ventures and can be bought or sold on the market. As the first two retainers are completely free, you might as well get both of them while you're there. To access your retainers, go to a summoning bell. These can be found in many places around the world, any one of them will do. Choose your retainer to access them and you will be presented a list of options. First, while your retainers do not have their own armory chests, they do have slightly more inventory space than you. They can even hold unique items separately from you so you can have multiple instances of them. This can be useful for stocking up on unique treasure maps for instance. They can also hold their own collections of elemental crystals if you feel that your personal limitation of 9999 crystals per type is simply too little. Next, they can also hold gill for you. This does not really do anything and I imagine the more likely scenario is that you will withdraw money from them regularly. This is because retainers are your way to sell items on the market board and when an item is sold, the gill lands in the retainer's storage, not yours. Speaking of selling on the market, when you open the market's menu, you can either drag an item from your inventory to the menu to put it up for sale, or use the put up for sale option. This opens a menu to specify your sale. By default, the asking price is set to the price a vendor would pay you for the item. Simply put, you should always make sure to change the asking price to be higher than that. You can also use the quantity option to choose how many of the item you're selling. Take note that Final Fantasy XIV does not allow players to purchase part of a stack. So if you're selling an item that people tend to purchase in smaller amounts, you may need to split it up into smaller stacks for people to bother purchasing it. To help you choose your price, you can use the Compare Prices button to open the item in the market board interface. In this menu, you can see all the other sales of the item in question, allowing you to match your price against the other sellers as you see fit. Notably, you also have the History button here, which lets you see when and to what prices the most recent sales of the item have gone. This allows you to gauge how regularly the item sells and, to some degree, guide you to choose a fitting price for your item. Returning to your sale, you may have noticed the line at the bottom regarding tax. Depending on what city your retainer is situated in, there will be a certain amount of tax to all market board sales they perform. To be precise, if your retainer is situated in a city with a 5% tax rate, then 5% of the profit you would have made on the sale will be deducted. Additionally, the buyer of the item will also be taxed 5% extra of the total price. In other words, the buyer pays 105% of the price of the item and you earn 95% of the price. To inspect the tax rates in different cities, talk with any retainer bucket and choose the View Market Tax Rates option. You may see some cities that have a reduced tax rate. Choose the city to get a detailed explanation which includes both the exact tax rate as well as when that tax rate changes again. To move your retainer to a city with a more advantageous tax rate, visit a retainer bucket in that city and choose the Dispatch a Retainer To option. If you wish to optimize your revenue from your retainers, this can be worthwhile. Returning back to your sale again, 
Fortunately, it does not cost anything to make a posting of a sale. It only costs the tax if the item sells. You can, however, only have at most 20 separate stacks of items on sale per retainer, meaning that with two retainers, you can sell at most 40 separate things at a time. Finally, your retainers will only have their items actively for sale for a week after you see them, so you need to visit them at least once a week to keep their sales rolling. Although, there is a good chance you may want to do this regularly to adjust your prices around the fluctuating market anyway. Moving further down the list, you can also view the sale history of the specific retainer. And at the bottom of the list, you can also choose to add a comment to the retainer. This can be helpful if you wish to remind yourself of what kind of things you store or sell on that specific retainer, for example. And to leave the retainer, you can choose quit. Finally, if your retainer has yet to be given a class, you have this option. To assign a class to a retainer, you need to have unlocked the class yourself. Take note that retainers can only start as gathering classes or combat classes, but later on can advance from a combat class to any combat job. To be specific, to become, say, a paladin, the retainer must start as a gladiator, but to become a dark knight, they can start as any combat class. A retainer can upgrade to a job at level 50 with a modern vocation item purchased at the retainer rocket for 40 ventures. I will explain shortly. To assign the retainer a class, you also need to have a level 1 weapon or tool that matches that class available in your inventory. This can, as stated, both be a combat or gathering class. Be aware that your retainer cannot go past your own level in any class or job and that to get the most value out of your retainers, you will need to furnish them with equipment yourself, although the main worry here is item level. Leveling up a retainer can take a long time and changing their class resets their level, so make sure to give them a class you are willing to stick to. Once your retainer has attained a class, they can do a handful of different ventures to earn experience and, more importantly, get you some loot. To send your retainer on a venture, you pay them confusingly in ventures as a currency. This currency can be obtained in a few ways, but the most common one is to purchase them from your grand company for 200 company seals each. All retainers will have access to targeted ventures, exploration ventures, as well as quick exploration ventures. Let me explain what each means. Targeted ventures, being hunting for combat classes or mining, botany or fishing depending on what gatherer they are. In any case, targeted ventures are quick up to one hour tasks that get you a very specific material of your choice. Hunting typically gives access to items that are dropped by enemies like meat or skins. Mining, botany and fishing are self-explanatory. It costs one venture currency to perform a targeted venture, and the amount as well as how much high quality material, if possible, you get is determined also by the item level of your retainer's gear. Take note that in addition to specific targets having a level requirement, they may also have an item level requirement. Gathering classes instead have gathering stat requirements, and quantity gathered is based on perception. Exploration ventures similarly have four different variants with one for combat and one for each gatherer type. Exploration ventures have the same limitations of requiring a specific level and item level to do, but cost two venture currency per time. However, exploration ventures also take 18 hours each. They give somewhat random items in return, which tend to be some amount of the items you can do targeted ventures for. They also always return with some amount of elegant pieces, money. This type of venture is mostly helpful for when you are unable to send your retainer on a new task for a while anyway. Finally, the quick ventures. From level 10 and onward, your retainer can do these. They take one hour and cost two venture currency, and your retainer will come back with almost literally anything at all. This even includes equipment from 1.0 and the special Venture Coffer, which is where you find Retainer Fantasia. These coffers can also contain extremely valuable dyes like the General Purpose Jet Black Dye or Pure White Dyes. To be perfectly clear, even a level 10 Retainer could bring back a level 90 piece of equipment from a quick venture. What venture you should send your Retainers on depends lightly on your needs. 
If you don't want to visit your retainers multiple times a day, then the exploration ventures are a good choice. They also award very reliable and consistent rewards in literal money items. If you really need a specific material that your retainer can target, then you can use the target adventures. However, in virtually any other case, the quick exploration option is superior, both in terms of experience per hour, but also in the average values of items they return with. If your retainer came home just once with a pure white die, and then whiffed 50 times, it would still typically have earned you more gil than 50 days of exploration ventures, on average. The only downsides of quick ventures are that they can be quite intense to keep running, you need to start the retainer once per hour, and also expensive, relatively speaking, two venture currency per hour. But aside from that, they're always the best pick. Now, that is all for this guide. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you maybe learned something new about retainers, and if you did, consider leaving a like. You can also subscribe or hit the bell to get notified when next I post a video. And if you have any questions or anything to add, or just want to tell me, please do leave a comment down below. Fun fact, here's a really random one I don't know where I would mention otherwise. Have you ever wondered why our inventory tabs are 7 rows of 5 item slots, leading to a grand total of a random 140 slots? Well, a long time ago, each tab was only 5 rows of 5 slots, a grand total of 100 item slots, and an inventory expansion that allegedly pushed the inventory database to its limits is the reason we have 140 item slots today.